Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. And today we are talking about one of the most overlooked locations to catch bass in the summertime. We're talking about fishing submerged grass. By the time we get to the middle of summer, a lot of bass have really been beat up. And what I mean is they've been fished for a lot, right? We've gone through the entire spring, tons of anglers on the lake, part of the summer, and those fish are taking a beating. A lot of anglers like to just go down the bank and fish. They fish visual cover, visual structure. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that, especially at times of the year where there's less fishing pressure. But this time of the year, that can start waning. It can get tougher and tougher and tougher. And there is one place that is vastly overlooked. I mean, the vast majority of anglers do not fish submerged grass, or if they do, they don't do it effectively. As soon as I say grass, we start thinking, you know, punching, frogging, flipping, those sorts of things. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about cheese. I'm not talking about leafy grass in the back of a cove somewhere talking about submerged grass, oftentimes out on the main lake. It can be in coves too, but truly submerged grass. In some lakes, it might top out a foot or two under the surface. In other lakes, that grass might be 10, 15, 20, 25 feet deep. But that grass runs a huge part of the lake. Uh, bass use it, they live in it, they travel on it like a highway, they use it as a home. Uh, it's a huge part of the bass's cycle of life and most anglers are either unaware or just choose not to fish it because it's vast and it's not visual. So today I want to talk a little bit about that grass, uh, how the fish move around in it, how to know where to fish, and then of course some of the baits that we target those fish with. Now I will tell you right up front, today's video completely unplanned. I had a different video that I wanted to shoot for you today, uh, but my wife Cece and I were sitting and talking this morning and we were talking about grass fishing and something just clicked and it was right there. That's today's topic. That's what we need to talk about because it is so overlooked and a lot of anglers, as easy as summer fishing is, in my mind, it's very simple because I understand the places that the fish go, how to get in front of them, how to target those fish. But if you're not on those key things, summer can be incredibly frustrating because it's hot, it's miserable a lot of the time. And if you're not catching, that's terrible. So grass, that's like the last frontier for a lot of fishermen. And that's something you wanna start considering, something to add into your lineup because there are so many fish there. There's a huge population of fish that move to offshore submerged grass. And for the most part, they are not targeted by anglers. So they're a lot easier to catch. Now, as far as where you're going to find this grass, it depends on the lake, okay? There are a few lakes that have no grass. There are, there's a few lakes in the country where there's not a stitch of grass in them. But in a lot of lakes, you've got that shallow grass way in the backs of the coves somewhere. Uh, but then you'll also get these main lake grass lines. Uh, one of the best places to look for them is on big flats. So if you're looking at a contour map of the lake or you're on your electronics and you're looking at a map of the lake, you wanna look for the areas where those contour lines are spread out, those flatter areas where they're stacked in really tight, that's steep edges. We want the flat stuff. Those tend to be the areas where that grass will grow. If the lake is clear, it's really easy. I mean, you can literally use your eyes, drive around some of those areas and just look in the water. If there's shallow grass, perfect. Follow it out. You're looking for the outside edge. You're looking for where the grass stops. If the water's not clear, electronics will come into play, right? I can use live imaging and I can see a grass line. I can use 360 to see a grass line. I can drive with my outboard and see it on site imaging. But what we're looking for is that submerged grass. What I like to do, because these grass flats can be enormous. You know, on one lake, it might just be a little edge of grass. You know, it's out there 
25 feet off the bank, there's a grass line and it lasts 15 feet. And then there's not really a lot of grass beyond that. What that is, is like a whole second shoreline. There's fish up there on the actual shoreline. There's a whole other group of fish in this grass line that's paralleling shoreline. So it's like a whole second shoreline to them. But most of the boats are sitting just inside that grass, throwing to the visual cover, not fishing the stuff they can't see. These fish are not getting pressured. Those fish are getting beat on all day long. So in some places, it's just gonna be that edge. On your lake, maybe there's a ton of grass. Some lakes that have those big flats, you'll have a grass flat that will last for a quarter mile before you get to the end of it. So how do you fish that stuff? How do you know where to fish, where to skip over? You know, Clear Lake in California, I guided on for years. Clear Lake has grass lines that can stick out more than a mile. Solid. What do you do with that? It's actually really easy. Okay, I want you first to find that outermost limit of the grass. You're literally going to do that with your boat. If you're a bank angler, this is not an option for you. This is one of the few things that a bank angler can't do effectively. Most things you can do from shore just like a guy can do in a boat. But here we're talking about backing away from the bank. In a lot of lakes, that's farther than a bank angler can reach. Not all lakes though. If you can see a grass line, keep casting farther. If you can reach the end, you're in business. But on these lakes where that grass line goes forever, I want you to find the outermost edge, okay? And we're going to pretend that that is like the shoreline of the bank, the actual shoreline of the lake. What those fish will do, here, I've got a hard shoreline up here under these trees. We know that there are some fish living somewhere right here. First thing in the morning, they're likely to move up and feed. Later, they're going to back out and get into shade in here somewhere because it's summertime. They're going to sit in that shade. In the evening, they'll start moving around again. So once we find that outermost grass edge, if we pretend we're up against a new shoreline, what's going to happen? Low light, those fish are going to pop up and they're going to roam up on that outer edge of that grass. They're going to hunt higher that sun gets, the hotter it gets, the more they're gonna suck back to that deep edge. Now how we target them will change and we're gonna get to baits here in a minute because that's an important part of it. Uh, but that's what they're going to do. That's that exact same behavior as a shallow fish. You just can't see the shoreline with your eyes. Now clear water, maybe you can, that makes it even easier. Then this game is simple because you still have the visual, but you're doing it without all the other fishermen pressuring those same fish. Now, on a place like Clear Lake, once I've found that outer edge, that edge can run for 10 miles. So it's still giant. What we like to do then is fish the outermost pieces that are different. So maybe you've got a good solid edge of grass, but once in a while you have a clump that just sticks out a little farther, like a little bump out, essentially a point. Those are key. Maybe you've got a spot where a second type of grass grows with the other grass. You've got a hydrilla line and something else grows there too. Key spot. Maybe it's following the contour of a shoreline so it comes to a point and it makes a turn to go way out. Now you've got a little pocket and later on you've got a point. It's exactly like following the shoreline. The things that are different, whether that be thicker grass, different grass, a bend in the grass, a point in the grass, those are the key locations. It really is that simple. It's just not something that you can look at. Now targeting these fish, just as easy. It really is. You can do this very effectively and I'm amazed more people don't. On the one hand, I get it. People want to see what they're fishing. But on the other hand, there's so many fish out there. There's so many big fish out there that you have to get yourself past that discomfort and just go try it. Okay. Because this will work all the way through the summer until we get those cold nights in August, those first cold nights at the end of August, beginning of September, that grass will start to change. 
those fish are on the move. But that's a long time from now. This pattern can go. So, lower light. I've got a couple of things that I like to do. Basically, it's, it's two things. I like to throw a topwater and I like to throw a chatterbait. When I say top water, I specifically like to throw a whopper plopper because again, these are vast areas. So I'm trying to cover water and I need baits that will pull fish quickly because say I get out there at five in the morning, I may only have a 45 minute or an hour, an hour and a half long window before that sun is high enough that those fish start creeping back from that edge or to that edge. So a whopper plopper, this is the 130 size. The 130 whopper plopper has a huge commotion. It's got that critical sound. And because of its size, it has large drawing power. Bass will literally peel off of a piece of cover, turn, follow, and blast it. And I mean big ones will do it. Uh, it's really amazing. So that's a bait that has enough drawing power, one, but two, it has a lot of speed. I can cover a ton of water in a short amount of time. And that's why I'm so specific about that bait. Uh, it's not that you can't wake bait. It's not that you couldn't throw a spook or some style of walking bait. Uh, it's not that you couldn't go out there and even frog if you wanted to up over the top of that submerged stuff. You can do all those things, but none of those things cover water as quickly as a whopper plopper. This is just chuck and wind, chuck and wind, chuck and wind, and then boom, there's that big one you were looking for. The other bait that I throw, because not all grass beds top out high enough for this to be effective, right? Maybe that grass bed quits a foot to five feet under the surface. We're in business. But some of these grass beds we're talking about, they might top out in 10, 12, 15 feet of water. In that case, I wanna be subsurface. Same deal, I'm looking for a lot of draw. I'm looking for commotion. I want the fish to feel it, hear it, come to it. And that's why I throw that chatterbait. I like a big profile. This has the 5.5 spunk shad on it, not the 4.5. I want that full profile. Again, the bigger whopper plopper, the bigger chatterbait trailer. I'm trying to pull those fish from greater distance so that I can cover more water during that shorter period of time. Once that sun starts to get up, I make a change. I go to a soft jerk bait. Uh, depending again on depth of water will depend on the style of soft jerk bait. I have two of them here. This is Zoom. You're, you're familiar with the Super Fluke. This one's by X Zone. There's a huge difference between these baits. This bait, I'm going to fish very, very fast. Pop, 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 pop. Half in the water, half on the surface. Darting, popping, jumping. So if again, that grass is within a couple feet of the surface, once that sun starts to get up, fish start pulling down into the grass. They're not so likely to blast a whopper plopper or run out after a chatterbait. I switch to that fluke. It's just a little more natural. There's more sun now, they can see farther. Uh, and I'm able to continue to get those fish going into the morning. So something super fast, like a super fluke. But if that's not the deal, if I need to be down a little more, I switch over to this one. I have crushed them this spring and this summer on this bait right here. It's got, a little different action to it. So to me, this is like a, you know, it's just darting, moving, popping, super fast. The second I wanna go slower, twitch, 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 pop, twitch, twitch, twitch. Let it stall out, let it coast. Pop it once, let it coast. Pop, 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 let it coast. This bait has a really cool glide to it. They're very different. Like this one is spastic. This one is very relaxed. So the higher that sun gets, the more likely I am to be here. Like I said, we have crushed them this year on this bait and, and all over the place. I crushed them in Florida, crushed them in California, crushed them in Tennessee. Uh, it's really been effective. Now, all of these baits, I'm gonna link, if you guys aren't familiar with our videos, if you are, I'm just repeating myself. All of this gear will be linked in the video description below the video. 
It might be, if you just scroll down, you might be able to see it depending on your device and your platform. If you're on our actual website, it's right there. If you're on YouTube, you need to click more, then scroll down, you might even need to click more again. You might need to click the three little dots on your phone, scroll down, click the three dots again. But there is a whole description below this video where I'll link all this gear, the specific colors. Like this is a TW exclusive color, a Tackle Warehouse exclusive. That color is amazing. So I'll link the specifics of what I throw, my favorite colors in each of these baits for this pattern. Um, but anyway, let's get back to it. So as that sun's coming up, or I'm fishing that deeper grass, this one is a killer. Then we get that high sun, we start getting to that part of the day. I've got a couple more baits. Depending on how dense the grass is, because this could be one of 50 kinds of grass that are growing. Just depends on the lake, the part of the country, but the concept is the same regardless of the kind of grass that it is. If it's really thick, I tend to flip a jig on that outer edge. Now I say flip, that's not really what I mean. I'll throw a jig on that outer edge. I'm not trying to punch, that's a different deal. I'm trying to fish where that grass, typically that flat will come out, it's all grassy, and then you'll hit that grass edge and it'll break. A lot of times that's it, right where it goes to just a little deeper water, right? Right where that feathers out, where you've got that tall wall of grass and then no grass, right in that transition where there's a little bit of grass growing at the base of the wall, I like to throw that jig. And I'll just pop it through that stuff. Pretty aggressive movement. I like that double hop in the summertime. To me, it perfectly imitates, if you've ever seen a crawdad underwater, when they spook, they jump up, then they take off. That's what they do, they pop up and then go. I like to imitate that by giving my jig up a little pop, pop. And the second pop is bigger. Little pop, bigger pop. Reel up that slack, pop, pop. That's how I like to work that jig through that grass. And if that grass is fairly thick, it'll hang up in it and you really snap it free. And when you do that, they'll just crush it. Now it's important to have a jig with a pointed head. So this is a flipping style head. And then I want a trailer that's going to kick. So this is a Dirty Jigs flipping Jig. This is a net, bait, a net bait, the Packa Slim, the four inch Packa Slim Craw is one of my favorites. So we got some wind all of a sudden. Hopefully it doesn't interfere with the microphone for you guys. But that jig where I can pop it through the grass and those tails are back there kicking and swimming is really effective. Now if the grass is thinner, it's just loose grass, right? There's just a little here, a little there. I'll throw a shaky head instead. Lightweight, you know, like a 3 16th. If it's deeper water, go to a quarter, uh, but just pop that worm through there. And you guys know how much we love that net bait T Mac. Uh, it's an amazing worm for a shaky head. And we didn't come by that randomly. We compared all sorts of straight tailed worms underwater and studied the footage. And the T Mac was just a standout. So we started putting more time into it. And it's the amount of big fish I've caught on that bait is just insane. June bug is my personal favorite color this time of year. Tim's is Bama bug, half June bug, half green pumpkin. Uh, both very, very good colors, uh, but just a deadly way to get them if that grass is a little thinner. And then I actually wanna throw one more at you because this is a perfect scenario for these. There's a new category of baits that has emerged in the last couple of years. Some people call them heavy baits. Some people call them gravity baits. Some people call them heavy poop. I've heard them called all sorts of things. This is a Adeps cover scat. This is a Yamamoto, the Yama Tanuki. Uh, there are some other baits in this category, but these are the two I've had the most success with. These are weightless baits, but they, they sink quickly. They weigh a ton for being weightless. Uh, so this isn't like the Senko slow fall. This is like a shimmy to the bottom. But they're perfect for that outside grass because it's a, it's a weedless bait. You're fishing on a big wide gap hook. Four aught or five aught wide gap hook. So it's a big weedless bait, but it gets down quickly and it wants to stay down. 
So that's where it's, it's almost catching fish like a Senko does, but doing it in reverse. So a Senko is all about the fall. To me, these gravity style baits are all about the pop back up. So just like that jig, I'll throw those things out. They get down really well. They're weedless. They're not gonna catch on any of the grass. And then when I work them up, I give them like a little pop pop or even like a, a shake it up, either one. Because these baits will get a little bit of a twitch and a dart on their way up. So they, they pop up off the bottom and then they do that shimmy back down. Pop up off the bottom. And it's a reaction strike where a Senko is that slow fall. They come up and slurp it. This is the reverse. It darts off and they blast it. I feel like it catches those same fish, but it does it in a different way. And the beauty of these is that they're so heavy. They sink quickly. They can get down faster. They're really effective for fishing that outer deeper stuff uh, with a weightless presentation. But guys, no matter what style of bait you want to throw, this is a part of your lake that you want to bring some attention to. You want to take the time to try and do this because there are a lot of fish living on those outside grass lines. And the vast majority of anglers are not putting any real time into them. There are guys that go out and dabble in the grass, sure. But even at that, there's a grass line that's as big as your shoreline. Even if there's some guys out there dabbling, I mean, there's miles and miles and miles of that untouched grass with fish in it. You can find yourself a sweet spot or two that other people aren't fishing. Get out there, fish in the summer. There's a lot of big fish to be caught. It's a lot of fun. And there's some ways like this that are overlooked that can be really effective. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, again, this was not the one I had slated, but Cece and I were talking and it led to this. I think it's important. I think people need to know how to fish that grass. We want you to have our confidence so that you're willing to go out and try it, right? I'm, I wanna show you my exact baits, the exact colors, describe the kinds of places I'm looking for so that you can go out there with enough confidence that you'll try it long enough to find that first sweet spot. If you find one, and you stick a few fish or you stick a big one, you're set after that. You don't need me anymore. You can repeat that, find yourself another sweet spot. Maybe, maybe by then you're getting to the end of the bite, but next year you come out with confidence, you find half a dozen sweet spots. You can do this for years. Again, guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.